Today marks the first day that the S&P 500 has closed above the bear market downtrend. This is not calling the end of the bear market. However, it is still part of the bottoming process, something that we've been looking at here on the channel for 2022 and into the first half of 2023. This came about from the lows in June and our final look at the lows in October, where we anticipated October being that low, the cycle low for the bear market. Now it's not over yet and I could definitely, definitely be wrong, which is why we're going to continue to cover and look at both sides of the market. However, we will take a bias to one side based on what the information is telling us. Because at the end of the day, if you are to be investing in the markets, buying or selling, you need to take one side of the market based on what you are seeing. Of course, you don't have to take my word for it, but I am going to present to you what I see in the markets and how I'm playing the markets. And that's why you're here, liking the content, subscribing, bell notification icon, pushing the content out there to more people, which is precisely what we've been seeing on these recent videos. So thank you guys very, very much. And if this bear market is in fact coming to an end, I'm going to be very, very sad because the comments within the bear markets and these times as the market is churning around trying to find out what it wants to do are absolutely incredible. I don't just mean that to give you some sort of sugar-coated comment. It is so much more rewarding seeing you guys in this bear market and this process of coming out of the bear market than at the all-time highs when there are just people here trying to make money the quickest way possible and then get absolutely destroyed. So hats off to you guys. I know it was a big intro, but it really does mean a lot. I really enjoy seeing your comments and your growth in these comment sections down below. All right, enough of that fun stuff at the beginning. Let's have a look at what's going on this week in the markets and the big one here where we're seeing the markets begin to peak in that market sentiment and roll over and then how we're finding it objectively in the charts as well. One of the big pieces of news this week, looking at Forex Factory, is the GDP. So this came out above anticipation. So this is the forecast here, 2.6%. The gross domestic product of the US is actually increasing. You can see this particular chart here, it is going up and it has been going up since the pandemic low. There is yet to be a quarter of negative GDP growth based on how the US is recording that data now. And I know there are a lot of differing opinions out there as to when we should be in a recession or not, or you know why it should be a recession. Nonetheless, this is what the data is saying. This is what the percentages have come back at. So the actual was higher than the forecast, which is a good thing for the currency or the economy itself. And we'll look at the currency as well as it's been something we have been covering for quite some time with that peak in September. So GDP is out. What's next for some of these major announcements coming up? over the, the coming week or so, where we have the high impact stuff, the red here, core PCE price index, also looking at that. But the major one I want to have a look at here is a little further down, which is a federal funds rate. And so the uh, previous forecast and actual, we're at 4.5% as the previous, the forecast is 4.75. And next week, around the uh, 1st of February for the US guys. That is my birthday. So rem reminder to wish me a happy birthday on that day. And for us here, it will be February 2nd. Uh, that's gonna be the date that we find out about the interest rates. And the market is anticipating just a 0.25% interest rate rise. Something that we've been looking at as well, it's looking at how these interest rates have begun to slow, but it doesn't mean that they will stop, but it looks like we are slowing and potentially stopping for a period of time. So that's the big one to have a look at next week. And it looks like the market is anticipating the actuals, you know, what is actually going to be said as they've been lining up pretty well over the last uh, seven or so months. So moving on to the big market sentiment piece, and we have a big Bitcoin piece to look at as well in terms of market sentiment and where this is starting to roll over and a potential pullback for BTC. In terms of a recession, net percentage saying recession likely in next 12 months has begun to roll over. And this happened in April of 2020. The bottom was in March of 2020. So that reached its peak of global fund managers saying that they were expecting a recession. This was a rather quick one, like we can see 
from the GDP here. This was the only recession there. It was just for a quarter. And it also happened in March of 2009. People expecting a recession likely in the next 12 months, which was actually the bottom of the S&P, so the bottom of the stock markets. So moving my head out of the way just for a moment so we can see the dates here, the 2020 uh, peak of federal uh, global fund managers saying that it was the peak was about a month after that low. Could this be the case again? November of 2022 was the peak of this uh, recession likely in the next 12 months by the survey here. So potentially a month after the low, just like what happened in 2020. However, in 2009, that came at the exact low. Remember the low that we're looking at for the S&P was in October. So that came in on around, it was the 13th of October. And then the peak was in November, basically the peak of the market calling for a recession. And we've looked at this, covered it many, many times with how significant this particular peak was or the the calls for recession over 2022 and potentially into 2023. However, this is what we've been anticipating because we'd have to anticipate in order to make decisions in the market and put our money into the market. We can be wrong, but we have to take a position in order to trade. So we've been anticipating this low coming in and the market rolling over and eventually becoming weaker in their calls for recession and almost to the point of flipping from their calls in recession. Now we've had to do this earlier in order to get as close as we can to the bottom. We're not always going to get it right, but hopefully more often than not we do so that we can make better calls for our portfolios. So that's the the big one at this point in time. The likelihood of a recession is coming down from the Bank of America Global Fund Manager Survey, which has basically called those bottoms uh, pretty well on point over the last 14 years. These times in the market are quite difficult. The bottoms are always going to be difficult and the tops are always going to be difficult, which is why we look at a multitude of factors, most importantly, the charts, to give us a reading of what people are actually doing with their money at that point in time. It's no point going to the news because the news is just giving us a report of what's already happened, but we need to try and forecast what's coming next. doesn't mean that we will be right 100% of the time, but more often than not, we're trying to be right and at least have stops in place, ideas of where we would should get out if we are wrong. So far, nothing is suggesting that we are going to be wrong and the market is going to fall past those lows. It will fall, but not looking at the market falling past those lows. 3,500 on the S&P and 15,500 on Bitcoin. These are the type of comments you can expect around lows and potentially tops too. This is what a lot of people are thinking at that time. And it's really important to understand this, especially in context with market sentiment. Something like you cannot compare anything to anything right now. Markets are completely disconnected and manipulated. If you find yourself going into a rabbit hole of calling markets manipulated and you can't compare anything, meaning you can't look at history and every time is different, get out of the market now, save yourself heartache and money. Everything is manipulated but everything is charted. Everything shows up on the chart where people are buying and selling so that you can make your decision around where the manipulation is occurring and which side of the market you want to be on. Do you want to be going long or do you want to be going short based on all of the manip manipulation that is going on in the market? So if you find yourself always calling markets manipulated and things being disconnected, stay out of the markets, do yourself a favor and save yourself some money. It's always manipulated no matter where we are. All right, so that leads us on to the next piece here. Some more interesting info here around the panic and, and euphoria model, which is basically reaching it, its extremes right now. So I don't weigh everything on this, but it's interesting to note where these pieces of uh, data come up. Looking at the low here, this panic and euphoria underneath the green dotted line here is the extreme pessimism. And we're basically going through that at the moment. It's basically marked a lot of these bottoms. You can see the red dots here. And at every bottom, almost every bottom, you get extreme pessimism. And then at the peaks, excessive optimism. It usually flows into a longer period at those tops rather than sh uh, sharp peaks in tops. And the reason for that is people's emotions. We can get very, very fearful altogether. One sh uh, foul 
sharp swoop to a low. But at peaks, we like to remain greedy for a longer period of time, and it's much more difficult to see, which is why the tops form slightly differently. So that's just a quick look at this panic euphoria model, because I think it's very interesting to see uh, more market sentiment here. Now, moving on to the US dollar and the weakness that has continued here uh, goes beyond my expectation. I did expect to see at least more of a bounce here, but the swing chart keeps us safe in this case. There's a link to this in the top of the video description. You can find that right up here under GAN swing indicator. And I do talk about it a lot because it, because it is part of my trading plan. This is the main thing I look at to assess the trend and to know where I could place my stops in case I'm wrong and how to get into the market so that I can actually enter a position again in case I'm wrong if I think the market is going to keep falling, yet the market starts to break some swing tops. So in this case, the US dollar and why we're using this is just to assess uh, how strong maybe crypto Bitcoin will be over the coming weeks. Now, the US dollar, we uh, called for a top here in September, and that's precisely what has happened based a lot on the market structure and the extreme sentiment at that point in time for the US dollar to continue up and everything else to collapse. So far, the opposite has been true. US dollar has collapsed. Now, the final bit of support here is around this 101, 102, and it's holding out here for the last few weeks. We have only seen sort of one week bounces at any time during this particular collapse. The main thing is we still are, are above those, um, those highs and the 50% level. So maybe we do start to see that one to four week rally, or at least more than a one week rally here, which could cause Bitcoin to start to, to roll over and of course, cryptocurrencies to follow on that. Now, I have a video coming up about real estate and S&P and the macro economy. So make sure you are subscribed, like the content, all that sort of stuff, because we are starting to see a rollover in uh, fixed mortgage rates as well in the US. So there's a lot going on now with house prices not collapsing as people are anticipating, especially retail. And then Ten, what tends to happen is a flurry to the market after this. So I'm going to follow that up in a, in a future video, but just letting you guys know so that if you are interested in the macro economy and how things are all playing out, subscribe, like, all that sort of stuff, you know the drill to see this content in your newsfeed. Now that leads me to the potential rollover, like we looked at with the US dollar and now for BTC. This level where we are now is finding ourselves in the crypto fear and greed is at 55. This comes out at greed. Could you believe just a month ago that we would be finding ourselves at greed on the uh, crypto fear and greed index? Absolutely wild. Now, I'm just going to draw a line in here so we can see where 55 actually lines up with. This period through here, 2018, 2019, is the run up to that 2019 peak where Bitcoin went from about 4K, it broke out in April of 2019, went to that peak in June of 2019 to around $14,000. You can also see we had a bit of a correction here uh, at that, that greed point just before the market collapsed into that pandemic low. So the market was starting to climb out of the December 2019 low. This was for Bitcoin. And then it rolled over again. We've had multiple times where it's come up to about this particular level here, just into that greed before the market had a reversal. So you can see it uh, again here in July. Uh, we had it again right through this period. I need to draw that up. So that's about April, May of 2022, basically going into that peak before the market rolled over into May. And uh, again, just early to that. So that January, February, basically it was the bear market rally early on in the Bitcoin bear market. So around this 55 level is where Bitcoin and crypto potentially roll over, just maybe even for a short period of time. If that is the case, of course, that's going to bring a bit of fear to the market in Bitcoin. And like we pointed out in those earlier videos from this year, earlier in January, where I was looking at my forecasts for the S&P and for Bitcoin, we could potentially see ourselves roll over into mid, late February, maybe into early March to find a low. Now, I'm not saying that this low has to be a lower low than that previous low. But I am anticipating a low at some point in quarter one, which we have been covering for quite some time uh, on the channel here. Now, is this the top? I don't know. I'm not trying to claim that it's a top, but maybe we go a little higher. Maybe we break out of the $25,000 area and then start to roll over into some sort of low. I don't know what that price is going to be, 
the main thing I look at is the timing. And eventually the timing ends and we start to roll over into the next frame of timing as well. So I'm keeping my eye out for that. And should that area only come down into the, the 20s or the high teens, I'm gonna be taking those opportunities. And I'm telling you that now because a lot of people did not buy through this area, even though I talked about it for a long time and through this area here. So I'm not trying to tell you to buy, but just keep your eyes alert, keep your awareness out there for any sort of good buying opportunities especially if that news gets extremely fearful because it looks like, not trying to claim that it's the end, but it looks like we are flowing towards the end of a bear market and any sort of opportunities to these lows, especially if they are higher lows and we get that macro confirmation when the next levels are broken out, are going to be very good buying opportunities. If you wanted to play it safe, you would wait for that low to come in and then wait again for the highs to be broken. That is the safest entry point, something that I've covered a lot when it comes to altcoins and how I'll be playing altcoins for those macro long trades. Because this now, if we get this higher load, this is going to be probably one of the most pivotal points in all of crypto and Bitcoin for this upcoming cycle. The higher low is going to be the strong point here. Now, is that the higher low or was this the higher low? We'll see. But of course, this is my call for this being the absolute key point coming up in quarter one. The high low is going to be very, very important. And just for a little bit of support and resistance levels for those pricings in that time frame, we can just pull this square across into a now rectangle and you can see why I've drawn it to around that area there. The lows there at around 18K and those upper levels that are about 22K. So if you're waiting for the lower end, I'm not saying it's going to happen, or if you're waiting for the upper end, maybe that's as high or as low, I should say, that we ever come back to. So stay aware, stay tuned to the channel, watch the price of eggs as they continue to soar and potentially take out Elon Musk as the world's richest man. And I'll see you guys at the next video. Like, subscribe, you know all the good stuff down below. Stick around for the videos popping up on your left-hand side, and I'll catch you then. Peace out.